Did you know that every single audio transducer on this planet is technically an IEM if you're a whale? Actually, that's probably not even true. I'm, I'm, I feel like even though whales are huge, that their ears are probably tiny. It's probably one of those things. Uh, if anybody knows, let me know in the comments. Hey, awesome friends. I am awesome. Danny and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about one whale of an I am this guy right here. This is the MP 145 from Heidi's. So this set is actually in collaboration with the WDC, which is the whale dolphin conservation. So Heidi's did send this out for review. They didn't ask that I say anything in particular, just, you know, to give it a review and mention the WC collaboration. There's going to be a lot of whale puns, maybe if I think of any during the video. So I do apologize for that. But also very similar to the last Heidi's video we did. They really like you guys. They really like your engagement. So they're offering another giveaway. This time, one of these. So we're going to give away an MP145 to somebody that comments on this video. So if you want a chance at winning one of these, just leave a comment and I guess just be somewhere that Heidi's can ship to. So Earth, I guess. So in the comments, just go, I don't know, say hi or leave your favorite whale fact and we'll go from there. We'll announce the winner in about a week on the community page. So keep an eye out. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on the pricing for the MP143. Keep wanting to say 145. That's their last plane RAM. This one is their new one. Uh, name must be from the planar size. It is a 14.3 millimeter planar. Well, the 145 have had a 14.5. So this set is on Kickstarter. Heidi's does this uh, quite a bit. So it's not their first time doing this, but I know some people just would rather be able to purchase a set uh, outright, but it seems like it's cheaper on Kickstarter, at least to get things going first, I guess. And then MSRP, once it's like fully up and running, it's going to be a higher price. So M MSRP is set to be $159. But right now, like there was the super early bird, which at this point should be completely sold out. I apologize for getting this video out late. It's been hectic, but super early bird was $79. While there is a regular early bird, which last I checked, there was still some available for $99. And then I believe the base Kickstarter special is gonna be $119. That's what I saw on there. But there is a lot of bundles on there as well so you can basically get the mp143 with like a dongle deck or even a dap or a combination of the two or some other stuff there's like a few, like 10 different bundles and you get a lot of stuff and they're all like under 200 bucks so pretty good deal overall and it's kind of cool that there's so many options because you can just kind of find which one is right for you if you want just the im you can get just the im if you want to uh, you know, get a little bit more value out of it and make a little bundle, then there's other options too. Did you know that whales actually need custom IEM cables because standard ones are not big enough or long enough for them? Yeah, they need, they need custom ones. They have it tough. So as far as the unboxing goes, very simple, minimalistic, less presentation than the MP145 and less presentation overall for stuff around this price point. I'm gonna be going over this like at full MSRP. So just minimalistic, very plain, kind of open the box, IMs are there. And then under that, the accessories are all in the pouch and that's pretty much it. Accessories overall are pretty good quality and maybe on the lower end in quantity. The cable is thin, very malleable, lightweight, very easy to use, very easy to live with. It's a very decent cable. It feels like the hardware is well built and everything is sturdy. Definitely a plus. While the pouch that you get is like, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. It does the job. But at this price point, I would, you know, would be hoping for something a little bit better, like a case, something that's going to be a, a little nicer, or add a little bit more protection. But I mean, pouch does its job. It's okay. It's just kind of below what I expect at this price point. And then you get two ear tip shish kebabs. 
and like they're real shish kebabs they were on these plastic sticks just stacked up ear tips are fine there's no issues there i ended up having to go with personal ear tips because of the fit which i'll get into in a minute and there is tuning nozzles yes tuning nozzles i hate when companies make sets with tuning switches tuning nozzles tuning filters tuning anything because it's just more work and usually it's like you're going to just find the one that is you know more to your preference and then just stick to that one right i don't really go well i know i'm just lucky and i'm spoiled here but i don't go and like oh i want to listen to something a little different let me flip a switch it's mostly like oh, i want to listen to something different let me grab a different set again that's just a luxury i am lucky to have not everybody does but the cool thing is these tuning nozzles actually change the overall sound signature enough for it to be worth it like they're pretty distinct two of them are kind of close one of them is very different but the two that are closer to each other are still a little bit distinct enough to you know warrant it existing so as far as the build of the im goes it is solid. This IM is gonna last generations. I will hand this IM down to Sonny and he will hand it down. Well, he's not gonna be able to hand it down to his children cause he's neutered, but I don't know, maybe if he adopts some kittens or something, he'd be able to hand it down to them at that point. But this IM is gonna last forever. It is one solid metal piece. Like if I throw this at a window, it's gonna break the window. As for the fit, the shell's pretty big, but it's kind of flat. So it's like a flat rock almost, like the ones that you go and skip down like at the lake or something. It's a good skipping stone, but nozzle's kind of short and stubby. So you got this long, flat um, shell, and then the nozzle kind of just doesn't reach quite enough, you know? I had to use ear tips that helped extend that nozzle to just make it a comfortable fit for me. But if you have issues fitting bigger IEMs, this might be trouble for you because the shell's not small. It's just the nozzle's small. There's two points of concern here. It's just the big flat shell and then the short stubby nozzle. And now it's time for everybody's favorite segment, graph sniffing. But before we get into that, did you know that whales actually don't have any issues with unvented IEMs? Yeah because their blowhole is just a natural vent. So no pressure, it just blows out their hole. So here is all three graphs. These are the graphs for all three of the different tunings. As you can see, two of them are pretty close. They do sound quite distinct, in, especially in one aspect of the sound signature. And then that third one, that is a very different sound signature. That is quite, quite different than the other two. But my favorite was the rose gold nozzle, which is the one that's actually on the IEMs. I would consider that the stock tuning. That was my favorite one. Then the other two were about the same. But so we're going to go over the review based on the rose gold nozzle. And then I'll mention here and there how the other two nozzles were different. So let's go ahead and go over my sound signature keywords and then i'll have another whale fact for you guys right after so my keywords are technical shallow high definition refined and roomy overall i felt like heidi's really learned about you know some of the usual planar iam shortcomings that we see and come across and really helped you know build on what they did with the mp145 like I personally, I'm not a huge fan of planar IMs. I don't search for them. I don't use them very often. I have quite a lot of them and I've used a lot of them. I'm familiar with like what they are and what they do. And I think they're good at what they do, but there's other aspects of them that they just don't vibe with me too much. But MP145 was a big step in the right direction, at least for me in you know, covering up those shortcomings and MP143, in my opinion, really builds on that. Like this is another step in that correct direction. Did you know that whales favorite video games are gotchas? Yeah, they love those gotchas. Yes, they do. All right, so let's start with the base. Base is back-ended, 
What I mean by that is that there's less focus on the impact and thump of the mid bass and more so on the body rumble and slam of the sub bass. While this set has adequate note weight, like it doesn't feel thin. Overall, the viscosity is like not there. Like there is amazing texture in the bass. Like it's so well defined. There is good texture and there is a lot of detail that you can find and follow within the bass. But like I said, the viscosity is not there. It's a very light bass. It's a little difficult to explain because to me, there's, you know, multiple dimensions to bass. It's not just like a lot of bass. Yeah, like there's quantity, then there's quality, and then there's the characteristics of the bass. So it has a good amount of quantity in the bass, uh, especially sub bass, except it just still feels a little light. It's a little thin and easier to cut through. And that's just an aspect of planars, in my opinion, so far from my experience, that's just what they do. Like, even if they have a lot of bass, even if it's really well textured, well defined, usually it's just kind of light. But overall, I really like the bass on this set. Like, it, it's actually really, really fun and plays my library really nice. Mids are smooth, a little bit of airiness. Uh, they are towards the thinner side, not too thin though, but I wouldn't consider them, you know, completely full and lush and that lightness still comes into play here male vocals are okay like they just sound kind of even more so neutral while still being a little bit full but they don't extend into that more lush presentation female vocals very similar a little bit of air to them so a little bit of airiness and liveliness but not a whole lot of body or huskiness treble was actually very pleasant on these it's shimmery it's sparkly you know some people might think it's too much but it extends very well it's not harsh or grating it is a little bit more refined than other planars that i've heard including the 145 but it is adequate it did its job so when you go into the other nozzles uh the one that's close to it which is the silver nozzle that is close to the rose gold one it adds a little bit of extra energy in like the mid treble so it makes things a little bit sharper more defined but it does get close to sibling especially with my music library so i could see it being something nice for people that want that extra definement and that extra intensity in some other type of genres that aren't as you know crazy as k-pop but with k-pop it just was a little too much so rose gold nozzle was still better in my opinion and as for the red nozzle which is the one that's very different just completely cut out all that energy there it really lets you focus more so on the lower end and still has great you know treble extension without too much presence and lower treble making it sharper so very cool very cool signature that one was actually really nice as well reminded me a little bit of the p1 max which is an awesome set by the way also i really enjoy some good unique sets and this one definitely did that for me so the way i see it, it's basically two tunings here in this set you can have either the rose gold or the silver nozzle depending which one you prefer more because like i said they are close but there's some key distinct differences and then the red nozzle which will just be something completely different so all right now let's go over the text it being a planar very quick very peppy driver is fast so everything is fast Details are well separated. There is a lot of room in the sound stage. It's just very roomy, lots of space, expansive. Stage is, you know, open. Timbre is still, you know, more on the planar-ish side. Stuff doesn't linger enough. There's not enough body, enough presence sometimes. And things that, you know, usually you want to linger more, especially on the lower end, to give you that warm and natural decay. Some, it's not there, so. A little too quick sometimes so some of its strengths can end up hurting it but those are the trade-offs that you get with these type of sets like you're gonna get all those cool texts all that fun detail retrieval all the separation but less musicality even though this is better in the tonality compared to some other planars and that's gonna bring us to the rec rating so as far as the heidi's mp 143 goes i give it a rec rating of three it's a it's a good planar there's a lot of you know upsides to planars and this set is so far out of everything that i've heard that it's a planar 
the one with the least amount of the shortcomings of planars so especially with it being on kickstarter for like around half the msrp projected price which it's probably not even going to be the price i mean the msrp of the mp145 was the same and i think it's been like on a permanent sale ever since release so i don't expect it to be at msrp for long if it even does release at that price but i mean kickstarter is probably going to be the cheapest option until sales later on after full production so that's it the new heidi's mp 143 so rec rating three go check it out see if you can find a demo or something go check out the kickstarter page i'll link it in the description that way it's easier for you guys to find remember to comment one of you guys can get this for free and as long as heidi's is going to keep you know hooking us up with giveaways i'm going to keep doing them because i want you guys to get free stuff like hey yo anything that i can do for the homies right but good luck Thank you for tuning in. I am Awesome Danny, and until next time, you stay awesome, friends. Bye. Did you know that whales actually vocalize their emotions when they're feeling sad, lonely, or upset? Which makes them the second biggest crybabies on the planet behind graf sniffers. When sunny Other's back like playing in the sun Meow and chasing all the butterflies